Uh, this is Charlie. With Pulp Fiction, I guess. Oh, this is Charlie. Um, anyway, I thought that I would talk about paper fills uh, today. I'm backing a, a really nice poster, um, and it's got a chip um, up at the top. It's really distracting. And I've been searching through a bunch of my posters, and I must have gone through, I'm, I don't know, 100 posters, 150 posters from the 60s and on before that, trying to find um, something that matches. Um, you can tell. These are about the closest things I could come up with. Um, this is an Argentinian, the prize, of Paul Newman. It, it matches, but it doesn't. The paper is different. See, it's a little shiny. Um, so you could probably make this work, but the shininess is probably end up giving it away. It's, it, it's a little bit yellower. The one I found that matched the best, this is a 1951 Hunt the Man Down poster. Uh, I'm sacrificing a poster here for the uh, for male punk. Uh, no, <laughs> this one is probably the closest. It's still not quite there, but this one, this one's the closest that I can find without. And, and, and really what it comes down to is um, you know, most of these they don't match, so you end up you end up uh, spraying them. Um, but it looks uh, like that might be the candidate. It's a little bit better than this. This one is a Havana Rose, another another one from 1951. I had duplicates of that, so. But uh, I don't know. Uh, anyway, I just kind of wanted to show you. If you look, you can see the. This is very matte finish. It's not uh, glossy like that Argentinian. Of course that was a 60's poster. It just was laying around for a long time. So, um, just kind of wanted to show you the, the difference. What you'll end up doing is, you know, you'll cut this piece out and uh, you'll have a piece of tracing paper. What you end up doing is, what I found is that you'll just take a, a piece a little bit bigger than this uh, and cut it out, and then you'll get it wet, and maybe I'll go through that, but uh, you'll get it wet, and you'll leave a little bit more, and what, what I have found is that if you get it wet and then tear it on the line, uh, it leaves a little bit of just exposed pulp on the edges. Um, anyway, so uh, just kind of wanted to show you the differences. And if you start with a a paper that matches the less you have to cover up. You know, if I would have put a pure white spot, you know, take a brand new piece of paper, uh, some cotton rag or something, which is too thick anyway, but um, you would have to do a lot of painting to match match the colors. So um, obviously I've turned. Um, anyway, bye. Um, I've kind of prepped the area. You just put a little piece of tape down. What you really worry about is this edge. So that when you bring in that piece, it lays flat on this edge. Um, not really a lot of prep. I could take this tool, take this tool a minute, kind of rough up the edges. Just a little bit, just to expose some of the pulp. Um, let me show you the piece right now. It's soaking in... Um, calcium hydroxide so let me stop I guess from over there all right I was gonna show just potatoes yeah. okay just to make potatoes to make potatoes Mashed potatoes. Well, well, they're not make. Well, they're, well, they're school potatoes are not mashed potatoes. All right, I wanted to show. Here's the piece. I soaked it in. Uh, I use uh, 
the uh, DS certification solution. Of course, you want to DS certify the piece that you're working, plus it gets it wet. Um, this is my special goo. I'm not going to use the pulp, just the glue that's in there. Well, the wheat paste that's its uh, paper pulp and glue. I'm going to put it down. I'm going to tear this piece out a little bit and then place it down and try to work it in as much as I can. Then when it dries, you can kind of you use this tool again to kind of flick it off. So, All right, bye. Well, you missed the exciting part since I need both hands to do it. But essentially, you lay the piece down and you want to make sure it's flush against the tape because it is expanded. It will reduce reduce in size. Man, this is not very good. It will reduce in size once it's dry. But essentially, uh, the piece has been added. You'll take the plastic to get it going. You can move it over the plastic. Um, and it just goes right down. Out. Uh, as you can see, it does overlap. I don't know if you can see. You can see the edges. It overlaps a little bit. What will happen is when it when it dries, it will kind of rise up. And then you can take this and just scrape it a little, re-wet it down, and then re-burnish it. So, I know this is all confusing, probably, um, but essentially the paper is, is it's made out of pulp, so, let me see if I can find a good example. Well, this is a good example, the stuff here, I took this, put it in a blender, and it's not, there's another way to do it, if you boil it, it won't knot together, this is a very knotty type pulp, but it works well as long as you burnish it down. Uh, you put it in pinholes, stuff like that, uh, and then the wheat paste is what's in there. So, uh, but anyway, yeah. Uh, so tomorrow this will all be dried up. And I can play with it some more. Bye. This is Charlie again, and talk to you later. Pulpfixing.com. I guess I'm a marketeer. <laughs> Bye.